Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Node-RED Modbus communication. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So Node-RED can easily connect to industrial controls using Modbus communication. Now Modbus, Modbus is a master-slave type communication. Masters will always send the commands to read or write to the slave on the network and the slave will then respond if the communication is directed at them. So you can have multiple slaves back to your master. Now we'll, we'll be using Node-RED uh, Contrib uh, Modbus Palette and this will allow us to communicate uh, Modbus Serial which is through RS-485 and it's a Modbus RTU communication to a solo process temperature controller and we'll also use Modbus Ethernet TCP to communicate to a click PLC. Now when you use uh, TCP Ethernet the master is referred to as the client and the slave is referred to as a server. So in this series uh, using RedNote we have previously installed the Windows software. We will now continue today to connect our industrial equipment to the Modbus protocol. So, we understood from last time that Red Node is used to create a single Modbus flow, and we were communicating to our solo process temperature controller using Modbus RTU on a serial RS-485 network. The present and set values of the controller will be read, then these values will be written to our Click PLC using an Ethernet Modbus TCP network. A set value from the analog input on a Click will be used then to write to the solo. And this will happen every 200 milliseconds or five times a second. So let's get started. And what you'll see on my screen here is we have our uh, Node Red um, program already in here. And we've already started our Node Red by going to our DOS prompt and entering Node Red. You can see, see here we're actually started and our flows have started. So you can see here, this is my flow and it's actually active right now. We have one simple flow and that has a injection which will cause our timing to happen. And if we just look at it, we go over here to our data and you can see here when I, if I double click it, you'll see that we have our payload and it will inject every 0.2 seconds. So every 0.2 seconds, it actually then activates this uh, flow in order to get the information back and forth. Then what we're using um, is the um, Modbus uh, Flex Getter and Flex Write to order to get the information in and out. So let's just move this back again so we can see the whole thing. And this Modbus is, is used, or the Modbus Tribute is used on our palette by installing it. So if we go up here to these uh, lash lines, we go to the Manage Palette, and you can see my Node Red Contrib uh, Modbus is right here, and it's already in use, which it is, we know that. And if we go to the install, if you just type in Modbus, you'll see that it comes right up here. And if it wasn't installed, then you can just hit install, and it will install that and bring it back to your palette itself. Let's just close that down. And once you've got it installed, you will see that we now have a whole series on a Modbus here that we can bring these nodes into our palette. We have Modbus reads and writes, but for multiple ones and the most flexible one, we use the Modbus flex getter and flex write. So to read and write to our Modbus. So like I said, we have the one flow here. So the, the first one we're doing here is our function. And we have a function node, which is coming right here. That allows us to set the parameters up in order to use the Modbus Flex Getter. So if we double click it, we can see that we have um, uh, FC or function code number three, which is in the Modbus um, read. And our unit ID is one. Our address is 4096, which is the Modbus address that we're looking for. And the quantity is two. Then we return this part to our message. So those of you familiar with um, Modbus will know those parameters quite well. 
And if you'd not, then we have links on the website to actually get you to where that actually is. So that's what our function block will do before our Modboss Flex Getter. And if we look at it, on the Flex Getter, what you will see is it will actually set up um, the Modbus pro, uh, our process capture controller. So if we hit this in our server, you will actually see we're actually using COM port number eight. We're using the serial type RTU buffer. Our baud rate 9600, data bits is eight, stop bits one, and we have even parity. So this is set up according to what we set are gonna be setting or showing on our solo process temperature controller. So once we have that server set up on our system, then we can use it in multiple nodes as we use red node or node red. So let's cancel out of that. And if we want to, what we can do is in order to get this function block, let me just call back up my data here. And we, have, we look at the flex getter. If we look at the help file and go down to the bottom of the help file, it will actually show you what that message payload or what that function block is actually supposed to be uh, reading. So here's my um, function code three, our unit ID, our address, and the quantity that we're receiving if we want to do multiple reads, which we are in this case. So that is how we um, read that. Then we go to, once we read the present value and set value out of our solo, we go to our function key again, and we're gonna write those into the click uh, PLC. And again, we can take a look at our function code. And again, here we have FC16. We're using unit number one. We're gonna do address zero, and our quantity is gonna be two. So, and then we go to our flex right. In our flex right, again, we're gonna set up the click PLC. We look at the server settings and we have our type is TCP. Our host is 192.168.1.130. The default port is 502, which is the default for Modbus TCP. And then we have a unit ID is one and our maximum timeout is 1,000 milliseconds or one second. So we'll just cancel out that. And again, what we do is we look at the Modbus Flex in the help file and you will look down here and you will see the actual example for a multiple payload. That gives us the, um, the format in which we have our function before this Flex getter. So once we have, so we've read our from our solo, we've written the two um, parameters to our uh, click then what we have to do is then um, read from the click the value to put in the set value. So again, function block, we set our parameters up. Then we do a um, flex getter. So we're actually reading now from the click and we're reading um, the third um, address. We can see that right here. So address number two, so zero, one, two which is the third one over, so let's cancel that. And then we, so we're reading that value. And then once we read that value, we're actually gonna then write this back to our solo. So again, we set the parameters up, our address 4097, one address. And then we use our write to write back into our solo process temperature controller. So that is our um, node red program or our flow to get the information and move it over. So now what we'll do is take a look at our actual solo. And actually before we well actually we'll take a look at the solo and in the solo we've covered this and how to um, there's the wiring. So our wiring is 485 and we will um, go into the address and set up so that we can do online and view these um, baud rates, parity, even or uh, length, parity and the stop bits. So these must match what we have set up in node red as well. And like I said, we, we we're running the back of the solo process temperature controller has an RS-45. So we're using a USB to 45 communication adapter, which we've done a post on in order to install that uh, unit. 
once we have installed that unit what you will see is that we have um, a new device manager we can go down here and we can actually see that we're on com number eight if i call up that com we will see the port settings which will match what we have in our communication settings for our solo and for uh, node red so we have that all set then we uh, so let's take a look quickly at the actual hardware that we have here and we will call this up okay, here we go And what you'll notice is that we have here is our Click PLC. We have an Ethernet based unit. It's the C0-11DRE-D with an analog card, analog in and out. And then we have our solo process temperature controller. It's the model 4096. And that's showing us our present value and our set value here. Then we have our USB. So this is our USB-485M, which converts our USB to um, RS-485, so it's our serial converter, which will allow us to connect our computer back to our solo process temperature controller. We also have a J-type thermocouple that will show us our present value of our temperature, ambient room temperature here. And then our set value is set right now here. And we also have our um, analog input going into our first analog signal of our card which will then allow us to set through our click plc program the actual set value here so that is our actual hardware and we do have a, um, a post on creating the analog input signal for you as well as well as collecting or connecting that back to the click plc and how to do that so the next uh, thing we should look at is actually the Click PLC program. So if we look at it, it up, the first thing we'll do is look under setup. We'll go to our port settings and we'll look at our setup of our Ethernet port. And that's located right here. You'll see that we have the same uh, IP setting as we set in our node red um, flow. So which is 192.168.1.130. Now it's important to set a static um, IP address or set it manually in order to make sure that every time this unit powers up, we have the same location or address. And then we configure it as our um, configuration as our, our client or the master, which is not in this case, but we have a slave. Again, the TCPI port is 502, which is default. Uh, maximum current sessions, so we can have three. So three different devices can be talking to this unit at the same time. And the uh, client inactivity timeout would be 60 seconds. So it doesn't receive something. We can have a signal in the, in the PLC telling us there's something wrong here. So that is our COM port settings. If we look under the setup, we can do the systems configuration just to show you the analog and here is our power supply, CPU, and then our analog card. We go down to our configuration, and you can see here we've scaled the input going from 0 to 10 volts, in our case 0 to 9 volts. It's going to 0 to uh, 1000, and that's going to be placed in DF1. Now the 1000 is because our decimal point is already um, present in there, so 1000 represent 100.0. So let's hit OK and OK from there. And then what we'll do is we'll go to um, where we get the information from in our unit. So address picker. So in our address picker, we look at their DS values and we can look at our Modbus communication addresses. And you will see that we have uh, 40,000 and one 40,002 and three are going to be my solo uh, present value my set value and my write value so that's how we get our addresses in here and you can also see in the in the code here we see our function codes that we can use for these addresses 
Hit OK on that. And then we can use our data view in our Click PLC in order to view these parameters. So currently right now, you can see that our present value is 226. Our set value is 364. And our right value is 364 here as well. And our scaled value. Looking at the program is very simple. All it's doing is it is taking our scaled analog input on DF1. So here's my number. Now remember this is in a floating point and it's converting that floating point into an integer and it's just taking the upper part there. So 364 and putting in a DS3. So that is the entire program. So if I take a look at my uh, reading, if I grab a hold of my um, probe and hold on to it, what you will see is that probe will start increasing and you will see that the um, node red actually starts increasing that data or that value up to wherever I'm talking about or whatever I'm holding it to. So very quick and easy. We also notice is that if I take my analog and we will just turn this pot, you will see that the set point now increases, decreases according to my pot as I turn it. So the program works uh, uh, quite well and quite quickly. Again, we have um, 200 milliseconds, which is five times a second that we're updating that data. So let's go just go right back to that flow again. If we look at the flow, you'll also see that um, as indication, we can actually see in our Modbus response, which is part of the, um, the palette that we brought in from Modbus. This is a great idea or a great way to actually see the values coming in. So 273 and 4477 are the present value and set value of the solo process controller. Then what we're doing is we write those in. So it's just saying that we've written two and then we're going to actually read. So it's actually tell us that we're reading that 477. Let's move that down here. So that 477 here. And so just to move that, just to make sure that it is, we'll just increase that a little bit more. And you can see that's now up to uh, 50.9. And then we write that back in to the address to uh, make sure it appears on our solo. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks um, on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so you make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.